According to Jean, Jean, Jean. Uh, uh, Harry, Harry Potter, one, two, three. Five. According to Jean Piaget, a famous psychologist, a schema is a mental framework for understanding or acting on the environment. For survival purposes, the brain is wired to connect the dots. And this is my backup. What's up everybody, welcome back. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to independently think for yourself. So the reason why I'm doing this is because nowadays, at least in my area, people don't really seem to think for themselves. They're too dependent on another or they're too dependent on their phone or they're just too dependent on social media, can't think for themselves. So in today's video, where I'm gonna be showing you guys how to independently think for yourself. For my first example, I would like to use the story, The Lord of the Flies. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it or if you guys even remember it, but in high school, they made me read this book called The Lord of the Flies. And basically what it's about is about these kids that are in band class and they're going on a trip, flying a plane, but the plane crash lands onto this deserted island. And on that island, those kids are basically put to the survival. Like, you know, you're on an island where no civilization is at. You're obviously gonna have to survive. And that's why the brain is wired to connect the dots so you can survive. Anyways, long story short, the kids were deserted on an island and were put to the test to survive. The kids split up into groups and one of them tried leading. His name was Jack. Jack tried leading and Jack was like this bad guy or whatever. He was like a Trump in that situation. And he was just trying to dictate everyone, run everyone in a corrupt way. And then there was another one, Ralph, which was pretty good. And, and it was the bad guys trying to dictate like all 30 kids. But then half of those kids are on his side and then half of the other kids are trying to rebel. More of the story, they're all on an island with no adults. No one's telling them what to do. They have their own mind. They have their own thinking. And then there's one that thinks he's superior to everyone and wants to run everyone. And those that defy him will get punished. They make a big deal about it, like 15 kids. Eventually, all of Ralph's group goes to Jack's because Jack got all the little bad kids to work together against the good kids. And then the good kids were just left with two freaking members. And then that led up to the death of a little innocent boy named Piggy with glasses that got picked on. Anyways, he tried standing up for himself and he eventually got killed. And basically, the reason why I'm telling you guys this backstory is because at the end of the movie, those kids realized they took it too far and now Piggy's dead. And it all could have been avoided if they worked together or it all could have been avoided if Jack didn't want to be on that Trump dictatorship. And it all could have been avoided if they had some moral sense and thought for themselves. So that's basically it. How to think for yourself. Imagine you're on an island. And this boy right here is trying to run everyone. He's like, yeah, I run this. You, you, and you are going to listen to me because I say so. Stop and pause. What are you guys going to do? Because me personally, I'm going to give him a big F you. You either want to work with me or not. You're not running anything because at the end of the day, life is a survival game. So at the end of the day, you want to work with me, you want to make a team, you want to be loyal, you want to be real with me, establish that, prove it, and then okay, let's go. And then we can come up with the compromise. But no one is better than the rest because look, one, two, three, four, same head, same body, same capabilities. Just because you mentally think you're superior to the rest does not make you better than them. And you rest should not feel any lower than them. Why? Because at the end of the day, you're all capable of doing the same things. Just work together. It shouldn't be that hard. It shouldn't be no Democratic Republican, no freaking good or bad. No, none of that. Just be grown ups, put your shit aside, and work together. Because that's what it's all about. It's a freaking survival game. What I'm saying here is independently think for yourself. At the end of the day, this is a survival game. Think for yourself. Anyways, that's just one way how to think for yourself. Think about as you're on an island. All our brains are wired to connect the dots. That's where these conspiracy theories come out of. And nine times out of 10, if you come up with your own conspiracy theory or whatever in your own area, then it's just your survival instinct kicking in, telling you, hey, this is wrong. Like, be smarter. Like the human beings we are, because we are the smartest smartest species on this planet. So guess what? Be smarter and freaking save yourself from the freaking situation. We were created to survive, not to depend on some random man politician. It's just like nowadays, we're just so wrapped up on our phones. We're just so into what so-and-so is tweeting. We're just so focused on freeing ASAP Rocky. We're just so focused on R. Kelly. We're just so focused on Kylie Jenner being the billionaire. We're just so focused on everything. But when was the last time you took a pause from social media or anyone else and minded your own business and decided to handle your own things to get yourself out of a freaking hole and think for yourself for a bit when was the last time when was the last time you tried doing something for yourself 
to get out of this cycle? When was the last time you did something for yourself to better your life? When was the last time you did something for yourself to better you? When was the last time you did something for yourself to make your life happier? But yeah, nowadays we're just so focused on social media, on any media that we sometimes stop and forget to think for ourselves. We're so dependent on what the media says. They could literally say, human beings, can only live up to 20 years. And here go all our masses. We can only live 20 years following that. Or they could say we can only use 10% of our brains. And then here go everybody. We can only use 10% of our brains because some random scientist with a freaking piece of paper said so. Again, use your freaking conscience. Use your gut feeling. When something's wrong, you'll know when it's wrong. When something's a lie, you'll know what to lie. If you use your gut feeling, listen to your instinct, listen to you. Like the spiritual side of the body is amazing. Like it's dope. That's all I got to say. D-O-P-E dope. I need you more than dope, Lady Gaga. No, I need my spirit more than dope. Moral of the story is think for yourself. Be your own person. Choose wisely. At the end of the day, you just got you. What's up everybody? And I apologize for the whole scene change. But what I mean by when I say that the brain is wired to connect the dots for survival purposes is basically think of it as a neuron web. So let's say that one day you heard that the pyramid with the eye in the middle is Illuminati, right? Well, think of it as that little set of information was stored in your brain somewhere, somewhere in that web where the memories lie. So now let's say that later you saw it on the dollar bill and now your brain looked at it and remembered, oh, Illuminati. And now you're like, hmm. So now does that mean that this dollar bill is part of the Illuminati? And now you start thinking about X plus things, like X as in a variable, as in any number can be X, any real number. But so now you start thinking about X plus things or all these scenarios. And now you start coming up with your own conspiracy theories. But in reality, it's just how your brain structured and functions for survival purposes. People sometimes tend to doubt and ignore these things and if you are that person i encourage you guys to please stop because after all that is just your brain working for survival purposes and i encourage you to listen to those little conspiracy theories and not ignore them and after you listen to them i encourage you to check in with your intuition either meditate on the thought or just ask your higher self what action should i take based upon this am i just overreacting or is this really something i should take into consideration Remember, we were given these things for a reason. Use them. Don't deny them. Who cares what other people think? Listen to you and be your own person. Remember, think of what I said in the beginning of this video. Think of it as if you were on an island. Use your own thoughts and intuition to survive. We're human beings, the smartest species on this planet, and the most extraordinary. Use those human capabilities to your advantage to survive. Be the dope human you are and can be to survive. Because you were given them for a reason, for survival reasons, for life reasons, because life is survival. So it's up to you guys at the end of the day. What is it that you want to do? What is it that you're going to do for your life? Are you going to think for yourself or are you going to let some random politician think for you? Think twice about what you do. Think twice about what you are thinking. Think twice about what's going on around you. And think twice about trusting anyone. So by the brain is wired to connect the dots for survival purposes being said, I encourage you guys to go out in your schools, your neighborhood, your community, and see if you can create your own conspiracy theory. Because that's how they're created. Although I really don't want to call them conspiracy theories because sometimes people already have that schema that conspiracy theories are wrong or are a lie. So they're going to be like conspiracy theories, but let's label them as survival theories. I encourage you guys to go out and create your own survival theories and comment them down below. I want to know. I want to hear what you guys come up with because I know you guys can do it. Everyone's capable of it. Anyone that's a human being, which is basically everyone watching this video, is capable of it. Capable of not just making their own survival theories, but of learning everything that I cover on this class series on the Robles channel. Exclusively on the Robles channel. So sound off with your survival theories down below.
Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And please forgive me for taking a while to post. I am busy with school, and I am busy learning new content. So I'm not quite sure when the next time will be when I post. But that's why YouTube has that notification feature that's down below, right next to the subscribe button, so that you guys are notified the next time I post a new video. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to comment down below your survival theories. It's been real on the R-O-B L-E-S channel. And I'm out. Peace. Daily tip. So for today's daily tip, I won't be showing my face because I look a little ratchet. But for today's daily tip, I'm going to be showing you guys how to remove oil dash grease stains from your clothing. So um, I don't know about y'all, but I know about us. And it's the only way we know how to rock. I'm just playing. But um, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I eat, drop either some food on me or, you know, some food falls or, you know, whatever the case may be, the grease from the food fell on the clothes and it stained it. And I don't know about you guys, but the detergent I use isn't enough to get rid of that. It'll clean the clothes, but it just, it'll still leave me that little mark. So what I personally like to do is I like to use Dawn dish soap uh, because it's dish soap and it's meant to take grease out from the pots and pans and because it helps the little duckies. Well, what I do is you locate the stain, which is right there, that's water. You locate the stain and then you just, you just drizzle some on there. Drizzle, drizzle. Get some little warm water, wet it. So it'll foam up and then you just scrub it a little bit and you see how it's like turning white so you do that get it a little foamy and then you just throw it in the washer and that is how you remove grease stains from clothes